After 48 hours of silence, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro has still not conceded the election to Lula da Silva after he was defeated on Sunday. However, and this is really important, he is not going to contest the results of the election. The Guardian reports, Jair Bolsonaro has reportedly thrown in the towel after his presidential election defeat in Brazil on Sunday, telling members of the Supreme Court, quote, it's over. In an interview with the newspaper O Globo, Bolsonaro's vice president, Hamilton Morau, made it clear he accepted the defeat. Quote, there's no point in crying anymore. We lost the game, he said. Morau also signaled that he opposed the pro-Bolsonaro protests that have involved hardcore supporters blockading roads to demand a military uprising rising, bringing traffic chaos to cities, including Rio and Sao Paulo. Quote, there are 58 million people who are unhappy, Morales said of Bolsonaro's voters, but they agreed to take part in the game, so they now need to calm down. Now, the protests that he referenced have began to die down just a little bit as of today. So there are still 167 road blockades, but that number was 271 consistently for the last two days. So the fact that there are less now signals that I think that his supporters know that the military is not going to step in and perform a coup and keep him in power illegally. Now, I'm not necessarily sure why Bolsonaro is throwing in the towel. Perhaps he doesn't have the institutional support needed to actually pull off a coup that he thought. Perhaps he would do it if he could. But what matters is that he's not doing that. He's stepping down and he's not conceding. And look, he's going out like a giant piss baby, but I don't care. What matters is that he's stepping down. There's going to be a transfer of power and he's accepting that. Donald Trump couldn't even do that. And Trump of the tropics now, as Jair Bolsonaro has been referred to, is doing what even Trump could not do. He's stepping down. Again, don't have to concede. You don't have to go nicely and you can cry all you want. But the important thing is that democracy will survive in Brazil because he's choosing to not fight and not delegitimize democracy. If Trump did what Bolsonaro is doing now, the United States would be in a completely different situation. But we saw the ways that Trump's lies about the election hurt democracy. It just spiraled. And it's had this ripple effect. And now there are hundreds of candidates literally across the country who are not only denying the 2020 election, but they're already conspiracy mongering about the 2022 elections because of Bolsonaro choosing to just go away and not fight this, not continue to spread lies about the election being stolen as he was kind of conspiracy mongering about during the election. Well, perhaps Brazil won't be as bad as we are. So this honestly is shocking to me. I fully expected him to contest the election because he gave us every indication that that is indeed what he's going to do. And again, perhaps he wanted to do that, but institutionally speaking, he just didn't have the support from uh, them or the military, which is most important if you want to pull off a coup. And so maybe he wanted to, maybe he would if he could. At this point, that's a distinction without a difference. As I stated, that doesn't matter. What matters is he's stepping down. And this is really huge for Brazil because as a country, they can go forward and actually try to create a democracy that functions, that is going to represent the people and not elites, not oil companies who are tearing down the Amazon rainforest. Now, Lula da Silva has pledged to end deforestation. And this is huge because understand the Amazon rainforest, it isn't just something that affects Brazil. This is referred to as the Earth's lungs and for good reason. Now, at the right time, the Brazilian people made the correct choice and it was close, but overall, they still voted for someone who's going to try to repair the country and save the planet as opposed to someone who wants to continue to douse gasoline on the fire that is our planet. But, you know, that's not necessarily the end of Bolsonaro's journey here. He could still remain politically active. There's still a lot of members of his party who agree with what he says, who, you know, have this fascistic ideology, who are going to be in government in Brazil. So it's not over. Like, this isn't the end of Bolsonaro. But for now... It's the start of a new chapter, 
And that's really encouraging to see. So I'm very, very proud of the Brazilian people, and I wish them luck. Uh, I'm excited to watch what Lula does as president because this is somebody who historically has been very pro-worker oriented. And it's nice to see him perhaps craft a blueprint that other leaders around the globe can follow that isn't a blueprint of just fascism and neoliberalism. It's a blueprint of pro-worker, worker rights and human rights and dignity.